This is Real Sports with Brian Gumbel. Tonight on Real Sports. After a year of so-called retirement, Lou Pinella is back in uniform as the new manager of the Chicago Cubs and hoping to somehow end a century of futility. Why can't they win, Lou? I don't know, but I'll tell you this. We are going to win now, Frank. You are going to win. That's all I can tell you. I don't care about the past. Once synonymous with an elite education, prep schools are popping up all over these days for reasons that have nothing to do with education and everything to do with basketball. When you were at Florida Prep, you didn't even go to class. No. You didn't have to go to class? No. In stark contrast to the many schools that have lost their way, University of Wisconsin seems to have turned its basketball program into a national power without sacrificing its academic standards. If we're not preparing these guys for what's coming later, we are failing them miserably. After winning Coach of the Year honors in the NHL, Ted Nolan was sidelined for nine years, an exile that he thinks was rooted in prejudice against his Native American heritage. The only thing I didn't do and I'll never do is get on my hands and knees and say, please give me a job. And now, from the HBO Real Sports Studio in New York, your host, Bryant Gumbel. Good evening, and welcome to Real Sports, where we begin tonight by talking of championships and history. We live in an era when sports franchises and fans seem obsessed with immediate gratification. In all sports, coaches are given two to three years to turn things around, winning ways are expected, and for some franchises, a decade without a title is viewed as a drought. Then there's the Chicago Cubs, who've compiled a record of futility unmatched by any team in any sport. You see, the Chicago Cubs basically skipped the 20th century. They haven't won a championship in 99 years. Still, loyal Cubs fans around the world, and I count myself among them, are once again hoping this could be the year and many are looking to Lou Pinella as a savior. Now, it may be unreasonable to expect any one man to reverse a full century of misery, but somehow, Pinella feels he's up to that challenge. Frank DeFord has more in this Real Sports Sports Illustrated profile. And then just get the sign and throw it. Don't make it make the hitter think that there's possibly a mother curveball coming. Possibly. The last time Lou Pinella signed on to manage a ball club, his hometown Tampa Bay Devil Rays, Things didn't go quite as well as he'd hoped. If you want to win, you can see why you lose 100 mother games. You were dying inside. I was dying inside, Frank, because I, I've always uh, I won and I've always competed, and it was hard to do that uh, uh, I, I, at Tampa Bay. Your, your good friend Ben Lazar said he, he lost so much here he was batty. I'm a criminal lawyer, and I've seen people in prison who are less depressed. Is that an exaggeration or is that? No, that's an exaggeration. I, he might have caught me at the wrong, wrong time. Bad, bad, bad baseball. That's what it is. Bad, bad, bad baseball. Look, I don't like to lose, but you know, I, 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 I've been spoiled. I mean, I, I manage in New York where we won. I manage in Cincinnati where we won. I manage in Seattle where we won. All of a sudden, I, was, I wasn't used to it. And maybe being a little too cocky about my ability, I thought I was going to win here in Tampa Bay, I'll be honest with you. Instead, three long seasons ended in three finishes near the bottom of the league. And baseball's fiercest competitor not only quit his job, but he quit the sport altogether. Last summer, he was out of uniform for the first time in half a century, and the retirement was comfortable, if you like that sort of thing. Not bad, Lou, and he'll get bigger. That's a nice fish. But this is Lou Pinella we're talking about. And really, what fun is taking on a fish who can't fight you back? So it was only a matter of time. Long-suffering Cub fans, and we're going to win here. We're going to win here. Uh, and that, that's really the end of the story. Lou Pinella has signed on to lead perhaps the one team as hungry as he is, those lovable losers the Chicago Cubs, World Series champions, 1908. Why can't they win, Lou? I don't know, but I'll tell you this. We are going to win now, Frank. You are going to win. That's all I can tell you. I don't care about the past. What we have to do now is get our team to develop a little bit of the, what I want to call 
Cubby Swagger. Cubby Swagger. Cubby Swagger. <laughs> That's almost an oxymoron. I mean, Bear Swagger, I can <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but Cubby Swagger. Well, the Cubbies, they're the Cubbies, yeah. the lovable Cubbies. Do you think somehow that that wends its way into the player's psyche, that uh, we don't really have to win, we're Cubbies? Well, I hope not. I, you know, let me tell you this. I went to the Cub Convention, and that was an experience in itself. What is the Cub Convention? Cub Convention is, uh, they, they take over the Hilton Hotel, and there's about 18,000 of them. And I'll tell you this, the Cub fans ask some tough questions. I had one wonderful old lady come up to me. She says, I don't know how much I have left, she says, but can you please get this team to win? I said, lady, you know what? I'm 63. I don't have much time <laughs> left as a manager also, so we're on the same page. Of course, Lupinella has never been the patient sort when victory was on the line. As part of the Bronx Zoo Yankees of the late 1970s, he spent most of his career winning and the rest of it complaining that he wasn't winning more often. His passion, his desperation really, was on full display for better or for worse. He gave his boss at the time, a similar kind of guy, an idea. Mr. Steinbrenner called me in uh, my, my final year there and he said, look, what are you, what are you planning? I said, uh, truthfully, I'm gonna go into the business for all I told him. And he says, I, I think you should consider staying around. He said, because down the road, uh, I've got some visions for you, and, and those include being the manager of this team. So it was that two years later, George Steinbrenner cast Spinella as the leading man on baseball's biggest stage, where the only thing worse than losing was being boring. Steinbrenner would call me in and say, now look, you get kicked out of a ball game, you gotta put some fannies in the seats too and entertain a little bit. He said, just don't meekly go back to the dugout, put on a little bit of a show. And I think I got a little bit of that from that and, 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 and from watching Billy, that was really my mentor. Billy Martin was, of course, the pioneer. The Yankee manager in Pinella's playing days, he'd invented some of the techniques that Lou would later perfect. Holy cow, Lou is putting on the Academy Awards scene here. Before long, Pinella would take his show on the road and become known more for his sharp instincts than his sharp tongue. First stop, Cincinnati, where he promptly won the World Series. Next stop, Seattle, where he was named Manager of the Year, twice. But the whole time, Billy and George's disciple never forgot his roots. Take the base, Lou, out of Bobby. Well, Billy Martin routine. This will be on the highlights tonight. Today, Lou commemorates his greatest fits alongside his finer achievements in his home office in Tampa. Now, this was in Cincinnati. Now, I'm going to tell you what people don't realize. All right. It takes a lot of work to grab that bag <laughs> and pull it out and then throw it. And, and this was the second throw. The first one sort of got away from me a little bit and, and didn't go very far, Frank. Now, this is Barishnikov. Huh? huh? Well, I, that, that's a 53-yard field goal. And that hat's taking a beating. Oh, my. Look at that. Ah, uh, look at that. How do you get your leg up so far? I don't know. And then at this time here, I was working with the strength coach in Seattle, and uh, he really had me limber and loose. Madness? Maybe. But Lou says there's a method to it. Sometimes a manager, he needs to, to wake up his club a little bit. To... And Lou's just been thrown out of the ball game. I've gone out to the to home plate, and you can ask these umpires many times, saying, look, one of you guys is going to have to throw me out tonight. Now, who wants the honor? And really? Oh, oh, yeah. Invariably, one of them will. And I remember this one game, I, the second baseman umpire was supposed to kick me out. And I kept sending runners over there, and he kept calling them safe. And I <laughs> say, for God's sake, call somebody out so I can go out and argue with you. Did you finally get kicked out? You finally got me about the seventh <laughs> inning, yeah. <laughs> Did you guys laugh at him sometimes when he a lot. lost? Oh, a lot. A lot. But that type of passion, uh, went right on to us as the players. It worked. For me, it worked 100%. Alex Rodriguez played for seven summers under Lou Pinella, beginning in 1994, his first year out of high school. When you got to the team, you're a kid, you're 18 years old, you must have heard stories about him and his temper, though, hadn't you? Well, not only did I hear him, but I was, I was a victim of one. I mean, I'll tell you a story. I remember, actually, I was 18 years old. He threw me 
four or five sliders, and I just kept swinging and swinging. And Lou, I mean, he comes up and goes, gosh darn it, son, I mean, I want to play, but you can't swing at those pitches. And, you know, I remember being 18, almost in tears. You're almost in tears. Almost in tears. Now, this is in Oakland. I remember being in the far end side of the bench, and, man, I just felt like, get me back in my senior high school uniform, you know? And then, sure enough, he comes and he gives me a big kiss in the, in the top of my head. So, son, you? I love you. I love you. I just want you to do well. And, you know, from that day on, you know, for the next 12 years, he's been just like a father to me. I must say, I've never heard of anybody kissing anybody in the dugout. Yeah. There's well, no did. kissing in baseball. Yeah, but, you know, when you have the heart and the passion, and, and he's such a great teacher. I remember after a game ending at 11 or 30 at night, we would eat the buffet, gather shower, and on the way out, he goes, come here, son, let's, let's work on your swing. And he'll this is be at 11 30 at night. No, this is now by one o'clock in the morning. He'll be there. I mean, I can remember like it's yesterday in his underwear and his t shirt, uh, maybe smoking a cigarette. And you'll, we'll stay there till 2 30, 3 o'clock in the morning talking about a swing. Alex Rodriguez, of course, became a star. And by the time he left the Mariners in 2001 as a free agent, he'd also become like family to Lou and his wife of 40 years. He sent a, a nice bat to, to my wife, Anita. To my second mom. Yeah, to my second mom. Alex was a wonderful young man. You cried when he went. Well, you know, uh, he's, he was special. Do you know he cried when you left? No, I didn't know that. <clears throat> that was the toughest thing I've ever had to do in my life. And I'll be honest with you, it was a relief once he left Seattle, because I knew, OK, kind of the torture stopped a little bit, you know? Uh, I'm free. I'm free. Turns out those people who've been calling him Sweet Lou all these years might have been on to something. Wistfully, he showed us his old neighborhood in West Tampa, where the children of Spanish immigrants like the Pineas, yes, that's the correct pronunciation, Pinea, did with what they had. Right over here at this factory, they used to make some really good rubber balls, hard rubber balls. Yeah. On Saturdays, when they'd the imperfect ones would be <laughs> discarded. Yeah. Uh, we would work our way over there and get ourselves a, a dozen or two, and <laughs> you play three, four, five, six games a day. And then when dinner was ready, mom would scream. Mom would scream, come on home, let's get. Mom still lives just across the street. And Lou made time for a kiss before we left. It was that lure of home and family that brought Lou back to Tampa in 2003 to try to turn the devil rays into winners. The team wasn't willing to spend on talent, and after three seasons, Lou walked away. He now says that that year away from the dugout, when he worked part-time as an analyst for Fox, changed him. You know, I went to the ballpark last year and, and, and doing my broadcasting thing, and I'd, the home team won or lost a ball game. I'd walk through the parking lot after, and Dad was throwing baseball with the kids. Mom was cooking some hot dogs on the grill. It's a part of the game I had never seen. Uh, you, you're in the dugout, you're trying to beat somebody all the time, and you don't see the, the, the total picture of, of it. It's a sport and it's entertainment. Yes, I'm, I'm intense, but no, I'm not as intense as I used to be. And yes, I want to win, but boy, I'll tell you what, there's a lot more to it than the winning and losing. I'm getting myself in trouble saying these things, but you know, I, I, I've changed, I've changed. Like people in Chicago probably expect me to, well, I'm gonna go throw a base or something. Well, I, no, I, I, I don't yeah, like that. you finished with that. I, I don't like that part of me. This then is the new Lou, reborn like the game itself is every spring. All right, Larry, how are things going here? Join Cubs training camp in Mesa, Arizona, <laughs> where he's getting to know his players, this young man here is going to have to hit either second or eighth in our lineup. And the fans, who hope he'll be their long-awaited savior. Win it for us this year. Boy, that's exactly <laughs> what we're here for, believe me. And if it looks for all the world like he couldn't be more relaxed, just don't think for a second that the passion's gone. It might just look a little different now. Take a look at Lou's reaction when, the week before camp began, we asked him about going back to the game that he loves. I can't wait to get to Mesa. I can't wait to uh, have our first full meeting with our coaching staff. I can't wait to talk to the pitchers on, on, on the 15th and catchers when they report. And then when the regulars report on the 20th. And look uh, forward with uh, 
with anticipation for a real good year. It will be, Sweet Lou swears, his final job in baseball. And all he wants from it is what he always has. Just one more of those life-giving wins. A championship for the Cubbies and for himself, one last day in the sun. Frank, is it my imagination or did Lou get emotional when he was talking about what he was looking forward to? Oh, no, he's strictly emotional. This is a guy, he wears it on his sleeve. And so when Lou cares about something, he cries very easily. Okay, now, look. Okay. All right, now, I like Lou. I know. You know that. Yes. And you know I love my Cubs. Yes. Okay? As a Cubs fan, I got to tell you, I've been here before. <laughs> I have, many times. Why should I think that Lou Pinella can do what Dusty Baker couldn't, what Leo DeRocher couldn't, what Jim Fry couldn't, what Don Zimmer couldn't, what Don Baylor couldn't, you want me to go on? What Elvin you, Tappy couldn't, you, what you, Bob Sheffield couldn't? You can go back to Frank Chance. Why should I think he can do it when they couldn't? I think you're absolutely right. He said himself, I had the vanity, the arrogance to think that I could turn the Tampa Bay Devil Rays around. He yeah, said, he I couldn't end a decade he, of incompetence there. He He's going to end a century I mean, of futility hey, here? You are the Cub fan. You are Cub every fan. Brian Gumbel, and you are more of an authority on this than anybody I know. And I just put you on the spot. I should be interviewing you about this <laughs> rather than the other way around. He, he says he thinks he's changed. Do you think he's kidding himself? I think he's grown older and matured, and I hate to use that word mellow, but he's mellowed some. He's not a middle-aged man anymore. He's moving into his dotage. And so, yes, I think he's a little calmer and more relaxed. It's got a bear watch. But he's still sweet Lou, and he's still, the sap will rise, Bryant, the sap will rise. Unfortunately, he's managing the saps. Right. <laughs> Frank, thanks very much. Okay.